Welcome back to 843 TV. We're here now with Coach Ken Cribb. He is the Bluffton High School football coach. For anybody that doesn't know, I don't know if there's anybody in Bluffton that doesn't know that you're the football coach. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me on the show. So, after four years in Bluffton now and those last two years in a 4A division, are you pleased with the establishment of the football program now at Bluffton High School? I really am. You know, at the end of each season, uh, I evaluate where we are and what we've done. And uh, first two years we're in 3A. Last two years we moved up to 4A, being one of the smaller 4As in, in the state. But uh, real pleased. The level of competition at this level is so high. And year in and year out, you're graduating players. You don't get to recruit your players like college, so you have to play with what, what you have. But uh, the level of play our kids are playing is uh, I'm real excited about the total program and uh, they're stepping up. Uh, we graduate seniors and the guys are just waiting on their opportunity to step in and, and do their part. And, uh, but I am, I'm real pleased at the, at the past four years and hope to uh, even make it even better. Ken, I know in the past four years, Bluffton High Football has won 44 games while only losing 10. And I believe y'all have averaged 42 points in the past 54 games. Can we expect that kind of success to continue in the future? Well, you know, we, uh, we take a lot of pride in, in, in putting on a fun show. Yeah. And uh, nothing's more fun than seeing a team move the ball up and down the field and score points. Everybody wants to see points scored. You know, the, the old traditional, the old school, grind it out, three yards in a cloud of dust, pretty much out the window. But uh, our kids love what we do. Um, we're not a one-man show. We, we share the wealth. Uh, we'll have games where we'll have five, six different people score. Um, and just we try to keep everybody involved, which also at the same time makes it a little tougher to defend. So um, I'm actually hoping that uh, we're planning on the future being even a little better. Great. Uh, the more the kids are in the program uh, running our system and the older they get, the better they are, are familiar with what we do. I think uh, the production is going to continue to increase. Well, well, speaking of the future, how do you feel about the feeder programs in Bluffton and what's, what's the talent look like coming up the pipeline? You know, th this community has been so special with, with the football and, you know, everything about Bluffton. Uh, you, you don't have many towns that still have that small town feel, but we have it here and it has a lot to do with our feeder programs. I think we have three different uh, programs, different levels. Um, we have the Pals, we have the Barracudas, and we have the Bulldogs. Uh, different different systems and they all come to what we do they come to my camps my clinics uh, and they're running our offense I know the pals 10 11 year 11 12 year olds just went undefeated again uh, the Bulldogs 10 11 year olds they just won the championship uh, our middle school football went undefeated and won the championship a lot of good players coming uh, it really helps when these younger teams these feeder programs buy into what we're doing uh, they come and study what we do. They come to the games and support us and at the same time just trying to sit there and take in, observe how we do what we do. Uh, so I'm real excited and real proud of what they're doing because they are really a, a major part of what our, our success. Sounds like at least 42 points a game. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. Like you said earlier, you can't recruit, but you got it, but you can start them early and they can run your offense and, and winning is so important to get them excited about striving towards that varsity level. And if they can see you guys winning and they buy in and they run your system and it just kind of feeds all into, into, the, into the upper school. It, it does. And, it, you know, I, I can't tell you the feeling when I go grocery shopping or stop by Parker's or any convenience stores and little kids say, hey, hey, Coach Crib, you know, yeah. big fan, <laughs> you know, love, love, can't wait to play for you. Yeah, well, it's good that you have them coming up because last year you lost 25 seniors and you guys had some, some big time injuries. I know to your, your two defensive linemen that are, that are D1 prospects all the way. So given all the loss from the senior class from last year, the injuries, I mean, you guys still had a good season. How, how were you able to overcome that? And what does it say about the state of your program and the foundation that you built? Well, you know, everything we do is, is as much mental as it is physical. And having our kids, you know, having a high level of confidence and, and believing what they're doing. And we hit some stumbling blocks along the way early in the season. We had a made, big graduation class. And then we had seven guys returning that had were key players. Five of those had injuries early on. And that's, that's hard to overcome. <clears throat> and I used different examples throughout the state. You know, for example, Union County played for the state championship last year. They went two and eight this season. So it, you have to have a program in place to have that continuity. And you have to be able to overcome adversity. You know, you never know which way the ball is going to bounce or you never know what injuries are coming your way. But for our kids to, to, to stay focused and have kids step in when, to help the injured players, 
to keep that level of play at such a high level, you know, I, I think that was one of our biggest accomplishments over the four years was to play that that well with that many injuries after that big of a graduation class. Yeah, well, it's a testament to you. You're doing a great job. I got a good staff and they got good support and good feeder programs. <laughs> well, hearing that 25 seniors are gone from last year is, I'm not totally understanding of football and I went to a much smaller school so 25 seniors that would be like all of my high school team <laughs> which I know you have that advantage you have a lot of kids but how does that work next year do you have a lot of starters returning next year and what does that make your expectation for next season we're, we're real excited uh, it's the hardest thing to replace is the skill players because so much goes involved in, in running certain like the offense the quarterback you know I had CJ Frazier for three years and then we replaced him that's that's one of the hardest things to do and we have 10 returning stars next year and a lot of skilled players. We're real excited about, ne about next season. Uh, just because of the level of play we finished out the season and the key returning stars we'll have going into next season, uh, we're real excited about the opportunity of what we have you know, that we can do. How many boys are on the team? We'll address 60 on Fridays. And we, have, we have about 100 <laughs> in the 10th, 11th, 12th grade program. Yeah. About 43 on the 9th grade team. Wow. Well, I know everybody has wonderful things to say about you, and they're really excited about the program. So I hear all of that stuff in the salon. So <laughs> if they're talking, it's all good stuff. So thank you for being with us. And I know that everybody's always looking forward to the next season of Bob Bobcats football. So make sure that you come back and join us next time for more 843 TV. Where communities come to speak.